Hi again, here we are for a little daily JavaScript. I'd like to follow up the video I did um, yesterday. And, uh, you know, we had finished up this little game here where, you know, you can kind of match up these tiles and they, they flip over. And if you find matching ones, they, uh, they stay open, right? And uh, you can see I've already forgotten which one is where, you know. Um, anyway, so you, you remember that. So what I'd like to do now is just um, create a, a couple buttons here. I have these two buttons, open and close. And what I want to do is I want to click the open button and have all the tiles open and then click the close button and then close all the tiles, right? And then we'll, we'll just take a look at that and talk about some of the things that we did um, yesterday and the day before, right? So uh, what I did already is I added two buttons. So looking at my markup, um, you could put these buttons really anywhere. What I did is I put them at the top of the body tag and um, just added them to the uh, to the body, right? So, uh, you know, I have a button tag here, and I gave the first button the ID open button, and I gave it the text open, and then the other button is button ID close button, and the text says close, okay? And we could give these um, buttons a style too, maybe... Uh, Maybe just to keep them simple, we'll uh, we'll just style the button tag here and say, uh, you know, font size, uh, I don't know, uh, 20 pixels, and give it a little bit of padding. Of half an M or something, right? Okay, so there's our buttons. Let's take a quick look at the styles that we have there, right? So now they're a little easier to see here, right? So, you know, my buttons here have uh, these two IDs, open button and close button, okay? And if you recall, the whole system that we have here works on the idea of adding the class flip to a box, and then the box will flip over, and then we remove the flip class to flip the box back. Let's take a quick uh, refresher on that, right? So here's my two buttons. Here's my container for my boxes. And you can see each box here, it's really just a div, but it has the class name box. And if I click it, it gets the class flip. And this flip class is associated with a style that says translate or transform rotate Y 180 degrees, and it flips over, right? And you can watch the previous couple videos um, for the whole rundown on that, right? So all we need to do then with the open button is add the flip class to all the boxes and then they should all flip over. And to close them we can remove the flip um, the flip class and then they should all flip back, right? So here's what we'll do is we'll we'll add a a jQuery selector here that will select the open button and assign a click function to it. And just in case we need it, we'll include the event object, right? So there's our open button. And when we open the box, what we'll do is we'll say, you know, we'll just select everybody. We'll say, okay, box, you know, everybody with the class name box, we'll say you guys are all going to add the class flip, okay? And so that's pretty simple, right? So I'll, I'll refresh and I'll click open and they all turn over, right? Now they're not going to turn back yet. We're going to have to add some code for that, but that was pretty easy, right? So let's do another one, right? So now if we want to flip all the boxes back, um, we can say close button, except we can't spell it with the square bracket, right? Um, and then we'll say, okay, anytime you click the close button then um, what we'll do is we'll say uh, box dot remove class right and so this is a review of what happened in the previous couple videos right and you can see now you know we're adding the class they flip over we remove the flip class and then they flip back let's give it a test right so I'll refresh, add the flip class, click again, remove the flip class, right? So that's kind of fun.
So you could use that in a way, um, you know, not like the game, but as some other system, right? Um, you know, if, uh, um, you know, maybe you had some other information on a page, and if someone hovered over something or clicked on something, you have a bunch of tiles that all flip over in kind of a 3D, you know, kind of animation, right? And, and I like what I have here, but maybe for this particular use, what I want to do is I want to flip all of them in order. So they start at the first one and they go one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So let's give that a try, right? And we'll review some of the things that we did before. So, you know, in the previous couple examples, we used add class and remove class. And what I want to do now is I want to do this a little bit differently, right? So what I want to do is I want to um, use set timeout to create a timeout so that we don't add the class immediately all in one, you know, one go, but instead add the class over time after a short duration, like a short wait, right? And that's the timeout. So what we'll do is we'll say um, set timeout, and this takes two properties or two, you know, parameters. So the first one is a function that will be executed after the timeout period. And the second parameter is the timeout period. So maybe I'll do this as 400 milliseconds, right? So, you know, I could put this here, but then, you know, inside the function, I need to, you know, um, you know, add the class to box, right? So what I'm going to do is this. Let's, let's delete that and do this over again, right? What I want to do is I want to say, how about box, you know, use the same selector we, we started with here, and then follow it with each. And I used each above to assign the, the different image classes to each of the boxes after we randomized them, right? So let's look at that again. So each allows us to look at each item in the collection. So when we use the jQuery selector, we're selecting, um, you know, elements on the page by this selector. And each allows us to look at each of those items, okay? And the way that it works is you put a function here. And it, this function can take a parameter, okay? And it can be have two properties. It can have the number, in our case, I'll put I, and the second parameter can be the element, okay? Inside the function, though, the, the this keyword is also the element. So I'm gonna use it this way where this is the element that we're talking about, okay? And the I is going to be the, the you know, the index or the number of the element, right? So if we had five boxes, then I would be zero, one, two, three, four, right? Okay, so now, you know, as I look at each of the boxes, I could say, you know, um, this dot add class, right? And I could do everything here, and then we'd have the same effect that we had on top here, right? But what I want to do is I want to add that timeout in here, because I want every box to have a short delay, okay? So we'll have a timeout function, and then we'll set the timeout. So maybe I want to do 400 milliseconds, except the first box I want to happen immediately, and then the second box, 400 milliseconds, and the third box, 800 milliseconds, right? And then the fourth one, 1200 milliseconds, right? So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the multiply operator and multiply by i. So if i is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, then 0 times 400 is 0, 1 times 400 is 400, 2 times 400 is 800, and we work our way through all of the numbers. So each, you know, each of the boxes here, you know, every time we look at each box, we're going to set a timeout that is progressively longer, right, for each one. And what we'll do is inside the function here, and I just put the, the per, you know, I put the, uh, oops, um, I put the, the cursor between the two curly brackets here and just made a, a line return there. And I'm going to put the code for the timeout inside here, right? So when, when the timeout occurs after this, this time period, then we're going to execute the code inside here, right? And so what I want to do is I want to, to target this. Now, the problem is this is a keyword that represents the current object. And what's going to happen here is this function isn't owned by um, jQuery and it doesn't represent the current object. In this case, in this, 
the set timeout, this is going to be the owner of, of timeout. So I think it's going to be the window object or something like that, right? So we can't get to box from here. So what we'll do is this. We'll say var box equals dollar sign this, right? And then in here, in place of that, we'll say box. So why does this work? Well, in this case, this function belongs to jQuery, and it is each of the boxes that we selected. Okay, so this, you know, here for this function, this belongs to jQuery, and, you know, because it was created by each, and the way that each functions, this is the element, each of those elements one at a time, right? Um, inside here, the timeout function owns this function here, and so, you know, this is a completely different object. So if we, you know, catch the box that we're looking at here and put it in a variable, inside this function we're creating sort of a closure, and so this whole function, since, since the inner function right here refers to a variable in the outer function, this variable persists until this function is, is cleared and, you know, done and deleted, right? So it has to run first and then you know, as long as this is living somewhere in the program, then it will remember the value that we set here for box. Okay, so that was kind of that's kind of a little complicated idea. Once you get the, it's actually it's very hard to explain. I don't know if I'm doing a good job there, but uh, um, once you practice with this, you'll get a you'll get a pretty good idea of how this and these closure values work. You know, you'll just get a feel for them, right? So uh, so anyway, what we'll do is we'll we'll take box now. So now that we've defined box here inside this function, we can say box dot, you know, add class, right? And then we'll add the uh, the flip class, right? So I'll save that, and then I'll refresh again here, and I'll click open, and now you can see each of the each of the the squares flips over one at a time in order, right? Um, with a delay and we you know you can change the delay here so maybe that was a little slow I'll change this to you know 300 milliseconds and then now it'll go a little faster right okay my, my animation's a little choppy here because I'm I'm doing I'm recording the video at the same time right but anyway so that kind of worked right and then if we wanted to apply the same idea here to the uh, to the closing button then we could do the same thing, right? So uh, why don't we do this? Why don't we say, uh, just this is good practice, right? So once you've done something, to do it again, right? So we'll follow the same procedure we did here. You know, each right. So there's our each function, and then we'll say var box equals dollar sign this. And then we'll do set timeout, and our timeout function will be, you know, let's make it. I'll make it the same time here. We'll multiply times the i that we've created. So we have to make sure we can't just put i here somewhere. It needs to be defined, right? So we have to make sure that we have i here in the each function, right? And then now we can say, you know, box dot remove class, right? and then the class we want to remove is flip, right? So I'll save that, and then we'll give it another test, right? So I'll, I'll refresh, and then I'll click open, and everybody opens, and then I'll click uh, close, and then everybody closes again, right? So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that's uh, maybe interesting for people to take a second look at, at these features that we used in the earlier example, um, you know, each, and uh, set timeout, and this concept of the closure, right? That's a really important um, feature in JavaScript, and you'll see that in a lot of places. And actually, here we're getting good use out of it. It's really helping us out, you know. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and have a great day.